G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again for another VB.net tutorial. This time around we're going to be talking about item templates. Now, before I explain exactly what they are, I want to quickly make a project. I'm going to add in a list box and then I'm going to talk about it. So just the same way we did in the previous video. So hurry up, Visual Basic. Swap to the XAML view, zoom on in. Okay. Now I've done a fair bit of research on this and I'm going to show you the simplest way to achieve this. There are lots of different ways to achieve it. I found this by far the easiest. I'm going to make a stack panel so everything adds nicely. I'm going to make a list box just like we've always done. Name it because it's good to, because I'm going to use it in code in fact. I'm going to set its height to let's say 200 and whoop. Now we do that. Now in the last video when I added in list box items, I simply went list view item and then I put the label of what I want the list view item to say. So what Visual Basic then does is it says, hey, I'm going to add a view view item. I'm going to put the text black inside of it, and I'm going to make it clickable. So by default, okay, this is actually a label. If you don't like that, I'm about to explain item templates. So if you want to customize this in any way, shape, or form, maybe you want to add a checkbox on the left-hand side of it. Maybe you want to add an image. Maybe you want this to be a text box so you can actually edit the text as you add them in. Okay, well you can do all of that with item templates, but I'm not going to show you how to do that right now. We need to set up our form just a little bit more. I'm going to add a text box with a name because we're going to use it in code. So we can add in new items. So text items, close it off. I need a button and I want add as the text in that button. Okay, scroll down, make sure that's happened. There it is. We're good to go. So. For the button though, I'm going to add a click event, so I'm going to go click equals new event handler. I'm going to go down to my code on the VB file, zoom in, and we're going to quickly add in a list item. So list test.items.add, and we're just going to put text.text. .text. Okay, so with that done, if we start the program up, we should be able to add list view items. This is a very simple way of doing it. And there we go. And we can click on them and yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's say that we do want to change the appearance of our list view items. Let's say we just don't want a plain label. We want a checkbox, then an image, and then a label after that. So we're going to get rid of this guy because we're not going to use him anymore. We now need to set up and tell Visual Basic in XAML how we want to structure our list boxes items. So the easiest way for us to do that is right here to add in a list box dot item template tag. Under that, you then put data template. All right. And in this gap here is where all the magic happens. This is where we tell it what controls we want to add to each list view item. So when I say each list view item, I mean that every single time we add one, it's going to have every single control that we add right here. So I want a checkbox. Oop, undo, undo. I want an image. And then I want a label. Now, errors galore. So what are these errors? These errors are actually coming from the fact that the property visual tree can only be set once. So what that means is that you can only have one control at a time. So that sucks. Now why don't we use a stack panel around it though? Okay, put that down there. Now you might be saying to me, but stack panels are vertical and we don't want to go vertical. Well, stack panels can also be horizontal. All you need to do is change the orientation property. So right here, stack panel orientation equals horizontal. Done. So that means every item that we add to our list view now, <coughs> we'll have a checkbox, an image, and then finally a label. So if we start this guy up and just using the code that we already had, there it is. So there is a checkbox there. There would be an image there, except for there's nothing in it. And there would be a label here, but there's nothing in it. Now, the reason test isn't working is because we destroyed the default way for Visual Basic to add list view items. And now we need, because we've taken control, we now need to tell it where that data is going to come from. Before we can do any of that, we need to make a class. OK? I want you to right click on this bad boy. I want you to add. I want you to go class. Okay, and we're going to call it item class. 
press enter, and here we are. So this is actually going to be like the data storage for each one of our properties or each one of our controls for each item template that we've made, or list view item for that matter. So what I'm going to do is just create three properties. Public property, we're going to start with checked for the checkbox. He's a boolean because he's either checked or he's not, not a bold, a boolean. Another public property for the image as an image source. Okay, I'm not going to focus on images in this one. And property text as a string. Okay, and now I'm going to create a constructor, a sub new, and I'm just going to accept each one of these properties <coughs> as parameters. Checked as a boolean. Image as, and just get this a URI, and then text as a string. Okay, don't be scared about that. I'm going to do a video in the future all about images, how to use them, but just not now. Okay, me.checked equals checked. Me.image, this one's a bit different. New bitmap image in brackets, the parameter image. Me.text equals text. Okay, if you didn't follow any of that, you probably need to brush up on your classes. Okay, I'm going to link a few videos down in the description for that. So please follow them. I'm not going to describe it in this video. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come across to the main window. Okay, and now what we have to do is we have to link our item class with our data template. Okay, so the checkbox is linked up to the checked property. The image is linked up to the image property. Text is the label property. Now, how does Visual Basic know that? It doesn't. Okay, so we actually have to tell it. And the way that works is we first of all find the property which controls the data we want. Now that sounds really, really confusing. So what I mean by that is checked. It tells me whether or not the checkbox is ticked or is not ticked. Okay. So what we do there is you go is checked equals something. And we're going to bind this to our item class. And I've just given away how we're going to do that. Open curlies, type in binding, and then the name of the property you're going to use. So checked. Just like so. This is the simplest way I've found for you to bind your class to a property or to a um, checkbox, I should say, or any control for that matter. So we're going to do the same thing for image and label. So image is a source, binding to image, because that's the name of our property. And then label, content, uh, binding, text. Okay? So there's our three properties, and they all link up with our item class perfectly. Okay? So what we're going to do now is we're just going to change our code in our VB file. So instead of just creating a string from our text box, we're going to be creating a new item class, and we're going to fill in the text, image, and text fields. Okay, so for the checked, I'm going to go false. For image, I'm going to go get this new URI, and in brackets, put the path of the image I want to use. So you're going to have to have a pictures for this people. Wow, I can't spell. Pictures, icons, clock.png. Go back. All right. And then finally, the text for our bah, zoom out. It's coming from the text box. Close the bracket, close the bracket. So we create a new item class, and we there's our content, there's our image, and there is our text. So if I start this up, it should hopefully work. It should be an, an unchecked tick box. It should be a clock, and it should have test. There it is. So two last things we're going to do for this video, and I'm going to stop it, and we're going to come back next video for the complicated stuff. Okay. What I'm going to do is I want to change the way the checkbox and the image display. So the checkbox at the moment sits at the top of my list view item. I don't want that. I want it to sit at the bottom or the, at the center. So that done. Zoom out a little. And I want to change the image because it's too big. I'm going to change it to 15. And if we start that up, those changes should be automatic. Let's go in here, test. And there we go. So they look a little bit nicer. I would probably even add a bit of padding between the image and the checkbox because it's probably not enough the way it's set up now. But that's about 90% right, I reckon. That's pretty darn good. The last thing we're going to do for this video is how do you actually check the information that's going on? So if they tick that checkbox, how do we actually know that they've checked it? Okay, let me quickly go here. Let's have a look at our add sub or our add function, I should call it. 
when we add a new item, we're adding it as an object. So Visual Basic actually doesn't care what we add to the list box. It's only after we add it that it tries to figure out how to display it. And the only reason it knows how to display it is because of our bindings. Because we bound our item class to these three controls, Visual Basic knows exactly how to display it. It puts it in the checkbox in the image and in the label. Right? It's easy for it to do it. So what we're actually doing is we're not just adding three controls. We're adding a whole item class into the list box and then the list box is figuring out how to display it. So that's the key factor there. And in fact, every item that we add to it is stored inside of items, which is basically a collection of the items that we've added to it, or our objects, I should be calling it. So what I'm going to do is we're going to add a quick bit of code to be able to check if they've checked the selected list view item. Okay, so let's add in another button. New click event. And we're going to call it, is this checked? All right, seems a bit silly, but why not? Yep, there's my button. It's all working. Scroll down because that was a bit quick. All right, let's go and code this button click one. So all I'm going to do is message box to true or false if it's checked or not. So message box dot show. Okay, it's coming from the list test. Okay, and now items would be if you want to check every single item in the list box. However, I want to check the one that's selected. There's a couple of them. There's item and items. If you've enabled multiple selection, multi-select on your list box, you're going to have to do the selected items, and you're going to have to loop through each one and check it out. I've just got it set to one, so I'm just going to use selected item. Okay, now if I go selected item dot, and then the property of our item class. So if I want to check if it's checked or not, if the checkbox is ticked, I should say, then I'm just checking this property. Now it didn't come up in a drop down box and that's because selected item is an object and Visual Basic has no idea what properties this object will have or has for that matter. So if we start it up, let's just add in a couple of blank ones. Click on this one, it says false so it means that checkbox is not ticked. If I tick it, there we go. So it'll check the one that I have selected. All right, that's it for this video. I'm going to do the second part of this video separately because it's a lot more complicated for what we're going to do. We're going to cover how do you change the data whilst it's already in the list box and how do you get items displayed before the program even starts. So thank you for watching this video, everybody. I'm going to catch you in the next one, hopefully, where we're going to do some more advanced stuff with this, with item templates. Thank you very much for watching. Catch you then.